Hello guys, very welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to talk about loop free alternate, uh, which is a method to bring up the alternate path or the backup path in the routing table uh, whenever there is a failure in the pa primary path. You might have heard about repair path or protection path and all those things, right? Uh, those are basically the backup path. So LFA is a method to bring up the backup or repair path into the routing table uh, once the primary path fails. Let's get started with the theory first. I'll talk a little bit about the concept of uh, LFA. How does it work? And then we'll move to the GNS3 topology where I would show you the configuration on iOS XR and iOS XE devices. We'll focus on this topology. I have four routers connected R1, R2, R3, R4. Let's take uh, the link between R1 and R2 into the consideration. For example, if this particular link fails, then how LFA is going to provide us a backup path and how that is going to work that is what we are going to discuss here in this uh, video here we have uh, a primary path which is a directly connected path between r1 and r2 uh, since this is just a single link so it would always be preferred and there is also an alternate path which is a longer path now suppose there is a problem with this primary path now how the r1 router is going to put that backup path which is indicated by the blue line here into the routing tables. LFA is going to provide us a quicker and faster method to bring this particular backup path into the routing table and also to be programmed in the data plane. So let's see how it does that. First of all, uh, on identifying that the link has failed, uh, you need to be running some link failure detection mechanism like BFD, etc. If you don't have that particular feature on your router, then it may take several seconds or even it may take minutes or sometime even the router would not know that there is a problem with the link. In order to find about the link failure very quickly, you need to have some mechanism like BFD, etc. So once you identify that link has failed, the actual timer starts for the routing protocol to bring the backup path into the routing table and then program it to the data plane. So what happens basically here I'm using ISIS. So ISIS checks its database to identify the backup path. And once it identifies that backup path, it will try to program that particular path into the data plane. So basically here I'm considering that the router is having control plane and data plane separation which is the case with most and most almost every router in the network today that they have uh, control and data plane separated. So uh, once the control plane identifies the, the backup path that this path needs to go as an alternate path in the routing table, it tries to configure that path into the data plane because the data plane is the place where the forwarding would happen. So path should be there first of all. But you can see this whole flow chart is going to take some time, right? And if we don't have any protocol like loop free alternate, then this can take so many seconds. And during those many seconds, we are going to have a big amount of packet loss. The rate of traffic is increasing through the router every day, every day. And more and more time router is taking to converge to the backup path more and more packet loss would be seen. And this time of convergence is directly proportional with the routes that we have in routing table. For example, if any router is having 1 million route and all needs to be converging to the backup path, it may take around 45 seconds or 50 seconds. Now let's try to understand that how LFA is going to improve the whole behavior. Uh, let's move to the next slide. So left hand side you can see that without LFA we'll have to go through each and every process. First of all link failure detection would happen then after that ISIS would identify a path and then it programs the data plane. We have seen that it will take so many seconds if we don't have LFA in place. Now let's see with LFA what happens. So link failure detection is definitely out of LFA. So you will have to configure link failure detection even if you have LFA or not, uh, that is out of consideration, but you still need to identify if the link is failing, then you'll have to identify that problem as quickly as possible. So always use BFD in your network. Now, in case you have configured LFA, the next step of this process is as soon as the router detects the link failure, it will switch to a pre-computed path 
which is the LFA path and this path need not to be programmed into the data plane because it will be present even before failure. So what LFA does is it will calculate a path at the time of forming adjacency itself. It will have a primary path and a repair path. That repair path would get into the data plane with the primary path and it would always remain there. It would not be used because the primary path is still the best path. As soon as the router detects primary path has failed, the backup path, which is already in data plane, would come into picture, would take precedence and would start forwarding the packet. So with this, you will have a subsequent failure. Most of the vendors are claiming that it is less than 50 milliseconds. And even I have seen that you won't see a single packet loss if you are running ping. And even if you are running some voice related application, for example, which are having very strict latency constraints, then in those case also, you would not notice any packet loss. Now let's dig a little bit further and try to understand that how LF is able to do what it is doing. In order to understand that, uh, we'll have to take a step back and try to understand that what LFA is trying to do. So LFA is trying to find one alternate path, not only alternate path, uh, the keyword here is loop free. So it is trying to find a loop free alternate path. LFA is checking each and every path which is coming from ISIS uh, against one algorithm or against some of the inequalities. If those inequalities are satisfied, then LFA would qualify those routes to be used as a repair path. So those inequalities and about LFA, if you want to read more, you can go to Google and search for the RFC 5286. There you would find all kind of inequalities mentioned. For example, one inequality I have written here, which says that the distance between R1 and R2, uh, that means this particular distance should be less than distance from R1 to R4, R1 to R4 plus distance between R4 to R2, distance between R4 to R2. So basically what this inequality is trying to say is in order to qualify a path as a backup path, what we'll have to ensure is that that particular path should not go through this R2. As much as we are able to ensure that this path is not through R2, we should be good that it is not a looping path. So this inequality basically ensures that part. Now there are inequalities about the broadcast network. There are inequalities about uh, the situation where you also need a node protection. Uh, there are also inequality about the downstream path. So there are four or five inequalities defined for any particular repair path to be qualified as a loop free alternate. Now you understand that as many as constraint you are going to put, although the constraints are very important, those needs to be there else there would be loops. But still, uh, since the constraints are there, it is not possible that even if you have the redundant path setup, uh, there would be chance that few of the path would fail to become loop free alternate and few of the path would qualify. So that thing is called coverage. So as many as inequalities you impose on those routes to make it more defined or more refined, you will lose the coverage uh, for LFA, which means that if you have 10 routes in your routing table, and even if you have redundant path to reach to those 10 networks, then it may also happen that only eight of those routes are having LFAs. Others did not qualify the LFA parameters or LFA inequalities. So that is called coverage. I'll talk a little more about coverage when I discuss about TI-LFA because TI-LFA is able to provide us 100% coverage and that is the best case. But I will end the classic LFA discussion here. I'll move to my lab. But after this, I'll also discuss uh, remote LFA in my next video. So stay tuned. Let's move to the lab first. First of all, let me quickly introduce you with my network. I have four routers active in this network. Uh, there are other routers also sitting, but those are uh, shut down for now. Uh, I have four routers, R1, R2, then R4, and this XR1 routers. And these R1, R2, and R4 routers are CSR 1000V iOS XE routers. And this uh, XR1 router is XR router, as you can see. I have loopbacks configured on all these routers. For example, on R1, the loopback is 1111, R2 loopback is 2222, 
R4 loopback is 4444 and XR1 router has uh, 5555 as a loopback. Now let's see how we have LFA in this particular network. So on R1 I have, uh, let me start with show ISIS neighbors. You can see I have two neighbors, R2 and XR1 router. Now let me just pull the configuration for router ISIS. Uh, you can see this particular command fast tray route per prefix level 1 all so I have this level 1 ISIS configured here and you understand that I am configuring fast tray route here FRR LFA is also called as fast tree route the keyword here is per prefix there is an option to configure per link LFA also but I am not using that uh, very less people use it because if you use per link LFA then in those cases what happens is all the prefix would choose one particular link because you are doing per uh, link LFA so your one link can start to starve at the time of failure while the other paths are just sitting idle so in order to avoid that I am using per prefix uh, LFA here and what per prefix LFA does is it will try to use all those available paths whichever are present from source to destination uh, the command to enable LFA is just this fast readout per prefix level 1 all. The second command which you are seeing is for remote LFA. This is for the uh, next video which I am going to uh, make. So you can ignore this command just for now. I am uh, focusing on classic LS LFA only on this particular video. So let me just show you that which are the prefixes for which I have the classic LFA running and active. If I do show IP route, let's say for 4444. Okay, so you can see that in order to reach to 4444, uh, I have two paths. I can use uh, the path which is going through gig2, and also I can use the path which is going through gig1. Right, so those are the primary path which I am seeing. There are two paths which are available a gig 2 and gig 1, and both of them are active, so I am using both of them. Now, for both the paths, I have a repair path also. So, for uh, the path which is going out of gig 2, I have a repair path which is going out of gig 1, and for the path which is going out of gig 1, I have a path which is going out of gig 2. I have an excellent redundancy in this network for 444 right now because this is a this is an ECMP path and for each ECMP path I have a repair path also available. So if you have a LFA up and running up and act, you should you should be able to notice something called repair path in your show IP route for that particular for any particular prefix for which LFA is running. Now there is one more command with which you can see uh, what is the coverage of your network, what is the coverage in this uh, classic LFA and for that you can just do uh, show ISIS fast read out and then there are a lot of options there if you put summary you can see that uh, currently I am having out of total 9 routes I have 7 protected and the coverage is 77% but this is not true because uh, I also have RLFA running on top of it so if I remove RLFA uh, coverage would uh, decrease let's say I mean I'll just go to router ISIS code and let me remove RLFA and see what is the coverage you can see the coverage has dropped to 44%. Thank you so much for watching this video. The next part of this video is RLFA and uh, that is also a very interesting topic. Please hit like, share, subscribe if you are finding these videos useful. And thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in my next video.